conceptualization of this entire process, you know, figuring out this ecosystem of what is required from the tech processes right down to the last mile effort. Uh, what was that whole process like? How did you sort of figure out that this is what is required? I'm sure there would have been several iterations, several trial and errors uh, that you had to go through. No, so initially, when I started, I, I hadn't imagined, in fact, to even start an organization. I thought of it as a project in 2013 because I thought that I'll do this project and use this as on my resume to go to Harvard or Princeton in one of those universities. So I think it started from there, thinking of it as a Wikipedia kind of open platform to thinking of it as a tech platform company. And I, in fact, enrolled in the Startup India program in 2015 myself, and I'm a beneficiary of the Startup India program because we applied back then to the IIM Ahmedabad program, IIT Delhi program, won all the competitions, got a few grants and tech support. And then the first step in the journey was to build out the web and mobile platform. So it's a simple rules engine algorithm, which when you put in your information, it tells you what are the government schemes you're eligible for on mobile and web. So we have digitized at the back end now close to 7,500 government programs. It's all in local languages. And as soon as you put in your information, it asks you intelligent questions, bases your profile, and then tells you automatically you're eligible for 30 programs, 40 programs. And to get to these programs, these are the 10, 15, 20 documents you require. Because to get a government program, you need to get your bank account, PAN card, caste certificate, income certificate, multiple documents in place. So that was kind of phase two of our journey. But then we realized another thing about India, and I think a lot has been said recently about it uh, by large enterprises as well, that while we are a huge market of a billion plus people, our addressable paying market is only about 20%. There are only about 150 to 200 million people, or I would say 40 or 50 million households who are actually paying for all the services. The services which, you, which are in e-commerce, fintech, even UPI for that matter. So our target audience is that 80% which is actually not on your digital platforms, right? Because those are the people who are eligible. And that's where we designed and rethought and pivoted kind of on our model and said that we need to build an assisted tech model where we are not building for the end user, but we are building for an agent in the community who then goes to this household or door to door and tells them and asks them the questions, onboards them on the platform and then helps them end to end in form filling so that they can actually get the access to schemes for a small fee or service. So in the process, this, in our case, 90% of our agents are women entrepreneurs. So these women entrepreneurs also earn a livelihood. And the end objective is also met where the last mile customer, which is in this case, a citizen or a small business or a farmer, uh, unorganized workers, all these segments get access to schemes. So that was the big shift, third pitch, that third uh, pivot that we did in terms of you know looking at the business model and seeing that how what best and frugal way would be there to reach scale right right so during that process i mean especially initially or whenever you tap into a new area or a new market so to speak uh, was there any kind of resistance or is there any initial resistance how does that connect between the agent and the customer uh, sort of build no, initially, I think the resistance was more, was more like mindset because a lot of people told us, oh, this is government's job. And I've always believed that so services like what you and me will avail in India, which are mm -hmm. things like passport, tax uh, filing, or let's say visa application, all three are done by private enterprises. Tata manages uh, passport, visa is managed by VFS, Infosys built the GST tax platform. So. The thinking was, how do you get this level of high quality service to the last mile? So we used to get most of the resistance from people and ecosystem saying this is government's job. But our belief at Hagdarshak has been that uh, service delivery should be private, high quality and right at the doorstep. And citizens should not be thought of as beneficiaries or people we are doing, giving freebies or helping. But they should be looked at as customers because these are the people who today are getting access to social security who will be the customers of the future for e-commerce, fintech, loans, insurance. So they are the market for the future. So we need to build it through social security and government schemes to scale. So that's where we kind of one had the mindset resistance from the ecosystem. Secondly, in the process itself, I think there was a, a huge work. I mean, a technology, in fact, building the platform was the easy part. I think the difficult part has been to build the network 
and that's where we relied on local networks women networks on the ground self help groups which where we have gone on the ground and trained through our teams uh, we deliberately took a call of going wide in terms of our geography so today we are present in 25 states in the country in over 10000 villages and we uh, gone literally door to door we we got on the ground we have a team of 450 people uh, who are on the ground with these agents and are supporting them in training hand holding and ensuring that they are able to provide this last mile social security and government scheme access and document access